It's Wild Card Wednesday with Crafting Cousins. What are we up to today? Stick around and we'll find out. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use an old piece of board, some mouse traps from the Dollar Tree, wording that I printed out, some lace and pearls from my stash, carbon paper, a sawtooth hanger, chalk paint, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some tools from my work cutting. So the first thing I wanted to do was take these mouse traps apart. I do want that clamp, but I didn't want the rest of this to be on here. So I just took a pair of needle nose pliers and was able to easily pry these out. Now we're going to paint our board. I'm using Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and just giving them a really good coat of paint on the front, the back, and all the sides. I'm going to be using this for a note holder in my new office. I finally got my office craft room moved downstairs and I'm so excited, but I want some pretty pieces that are also functional that I can use to do different things. And I thought that this piece would be great to hold things that I need to remember. Now, I'm using a piece of board that I got from my sister. She has some friends who do woodworking and they're always giving her scraps and she's been kind enough to share with me. But if you don't have any old wood, you can get pieces like this from Hobby Lobby. They have it in the back with the unfinished wood pieces and they're really inexpensive. Now we're going to paint our little mouse traps. I'm going to be using the Waverly chalk paint in the color Ballet Slipper Pink and I give the top and the sides a really good coat of paint. I didn't worry about painting the back of these because we're going to attach these to the board and you're not going to be able to see it, but I did want good coverage on the front and the sides. And I also went ahead and painted that little spring. It was a dark gray color and I didn't really like it but I love the rose gold color of the clamp, so I left it, but I did go over that little gray piece that holds that clamp down. I just used the edge of my brush and was able to cover that, and if you get any on your clamp, it wipes off real easily. It took about a coat and a half to cover the wording on this, but it took about two coats for those little springs. Now that my board is dry, I'm going to do a little bit of light distressing on this. So I grab my pencil and kind of run it along the edge and then I smear it in with my finger. I didn't want real heavy distressing on this piece, um, but I did want to kind of soften out those edges and give them a little bit of definition. Now we had one of our sweet subscribers who mentioned that she was worried I was going to get lead poisoning from doing this method. So I actually called my doctor, he is a good friend of mine, and I asked him about it and he said that no more than I'm doing, he doesn't worry about me getting lead poisoning. Um, I just do this just a little bit on my projects and then as soon as I'm through, I go and wash my hands. So he doesn't think I have anything to worry about, but thank you so much for mentioning it. Now we're going to transfer our wording onto our project. I'm going to be using one of my favorite methods of doing that, which is using carbon paper. I get my carbon paper from Office Depot, but you can also get it from Amazon. And I just put it down on my project where I want it to go, and then I trace over it and it transfers the wording onto my project. Once that is done, I'm going to use these Master's Touch graphic illustration markers and fill in the wording. I love these markers. I started using them when I used to do mixed media. I get them from Hobby Lobby and they're a little pricey. It's $12.99 a pack for five of these, but they put them on sale about every other week for 50% off and that's when I pick them up. They last a long time and they have such a great flow to them because they're made for illustration work. They have five different tips. They start off really fine and they go up to this brush tip. And I love using this brush tip on these thicker letters. It really makes it look like they were painted on. 
I'm going to go ahead and put my hanger on my board because I knew once I got this stuff on the front, it wasn't going to be easy to do. So I figured out where the center was and I marked where my little nails were going to go. And then I took it outside and nailed these on because nailing on this little table does not work out very well at all. Now we're going to make some shabby flowers. I take some flat lace and roll it up and cut some little strips. Then I take one of my strips and I wrap it around a couple of my fingers. Now how big your flowers are depends on how big the surface is that you're wrapping them on. Then I take a piece of twine, wrap it around the center really tight and tie it into a knot. I cut open those ends with my scissors, just kind of open that up. And then I cut slits into both sides. Now you're just going to fluff it up, pull it around, turn it into like a circle, make it look more like a flower, trim those edges to make it round. And then once I get it where it looks kind of round and like a flower, I put my center on. For these, I'm going to be using these little faux pearls. Um, my mother-in-law had tons of these. I love them. And I just cut three from the strand and glue them right there in the center. And I think that gives me a pretty little flower. Now we're going to do this one more time. We wrap it around our fingers about five or six times, slip it off, and tie a piece of twine right into the center as tight as you can get it. I double knot mine. Then we open up those ends with our scissors, cut some slits into it. It doesn't matter how neat they are, the messier the better, and then just fluff it out. Pull it around, twist it, do everything you have to to turn it into a nice circle. Then I trim it up. I take three of those little pearls and clip them off the string and glue them right down into the center and that gives me a pretty shabby flower. Now we're just going to attach our little flowers onto our mask traps by using a little dot of glue right in the center. I put my mouse traps down on my board and figure out where they're going to lay. And then I take some more of those pearls that my mother-in-law had and I kind of twist them around my board. I want to give them a really whimsical edge that looks kind of romantic. I just love that look. And then I attach them to my board using a little bit of hot glue. Now I started off putting glue on each individual pearl and I found out quickly that that was going to take forever. So I started just putting down a bead of glue and then I would stick my little pearls right down into them. I did purposely twist them around and make them look all crooked just to kind of give them a romantic look. Now we are going to attach our mouse traps to our board using a combination of my super glue wood glue and my hot glue. The wood glue is going to give these a permanent hold, but the hot glue will hold it on there until that wood glue has time to set. The last thing I did was take this little paper flower that I had and use a little bit of hot glue and glue it right into the middle of those pearls. And there's my new memo board. I really love how this piece turned out. I think that it is so pretty and so feminine and I don't even care that those are mouse traps on there. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring the bell so you'll be notified every time we upload new content. We upload videos three days per week, offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, paper crafting, hauls, and craft show information. We just know you'll find something you'll like with Crafting Cousins. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use four of these mini palettes I got from Dollar Tree, a small crate from Dollar Tree, some tissue paper I had on hand, Mod Podge, chalk paint, some wording I printed on the computer, carbon paper, and some tools from my work caddy. The first thing I did was take my four little palettes and give them a good coat of paint. 
I'm using the Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. I didn't want these to be a bright white. I like the off-white color of this plaster. So that is what I decided to go with. Um, I will say that painting these was a little bit of a pain. You have to get down in all those little nooks and crannies and get the edges of those little palettes. And then I also had to get in between and try to paint the back side of the wood on these little palettes. I don't want any of that raw wood to show, but I just kept messing with it. I used different size brushes and would go at different angles and I was finally able to get everything painted. I also painted my little crate. These are going to be coasters and this little crate is going to hold them for me. It was a lot easier to paint than those little palettes were. You do still want to get down in your little nooks and crannies, but the one size brush worked fine for this. I just went down in between them and I was able to get everything painted. Now that everything is dry, I wanted to do some distressing, but I want to use pink to distress with. I know that's not a typical distressing color, but y'all know that Kay and I love us some pink. It's actually our theme color throughout our channel, and I wanted to have a little bit of pink in these coasters. So I just took some of my pink acrylic paint, poured it out on my paper, and used my chippy brush and dip it in there and just lightly go over this and I really love the effect that the pink has. Now that my crate is dry, I wanted to do something a little extra with this and I had this beautiful rose printed tissue paper that one of my friends gave me a few years ago in my stash. So I put down a layer of Mod Podge on my crate, I apply my tissue, and then I put down another layer of Mod Podge. Now, if you will take and just kind of rub along those edges, it's easier if you use your finger and just kind of dip it in a little bit of water and run on the edge, it'll tear right off and it doesn't um, make a mess. Then I took my little embossing thing that I got from the Dollar Tree, the embossing tool, and kind of go in the middle and open that up between the slats and then I just use my brush with my Mod Podge on it and seal that down in between and I really love how this tissue paper looks once you get it applied to this wood. While that is drying I wanted to go ahead and put my words onto my palettes so I printed these off on the computer and the reason I did that is I really like this font. It's called Bumblebee and it's really whimsical and I didn't think that I could recreate that exactly with my handwriting but you could totally do this by hand. I just used my carbon paper and traced it on. Now I've had a lot of questions about these markers since I used them last. They are by Master's Touch. I get them at Hobby Lobby and they are graphic illustration markers so they flow really well. They're $12.99 a pack but Hobby Lobby puts these on sale for 50% off every other week and that's a great time to buy them. I took the medium sized one and filled in my words. Now this crate is really pretty but it's really dark and it didn't match my um, coasters real well. So I took some of that paint, both the plaster and the pink, and just did some dry brushing over the tissue on this crate. Um, I would use the plaster, then I would use the pink. And then once it was dry, I took a piece of sandpaper and lightly went over this and smoothed it out and it gave it the most beautiful old romantic look. And there's our coaster set. I love how this turned out. Now I'm using a Yeti cup with this and it doesn't sweat, but if you're going to be using a glass that sweats, I would seal those little palettes with some Mod Podge so that it doesn't mess up your chalk paint. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use this small crate I picked up at Goodwill, some pink flowers from Goodwill, some chalk paint, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some tools from my work caddy. The first thing I did was take a small piece of sandpaper and just kind of go over my crates, smoothing things out and cleaning them up. 
then I give it a good coat of paint. I'm going to be using Waverly Plaster Chalk Paint on this and I made sure that I painted all over. I got the top, the sides, in between all those little slats. It was pretty easy to do because those slats are wide and my brush fit in there really well. Now, I picked this crate up from Goodwill a while back and thought that I was going to use it in one of my projects, maybe for a home decor piece, um, but I never did pick it up and use it. And I finally <laughs> moved my craft room downstairs. I'm so excited. And now I'm working on organizing it and doing some storage. I am going to have a lot of plastic pieces for storage, but I want to have a few pieces that I can sit out on a shelf that would be pretty, and I'm going to use this as one of those. Once my crate was completely dry, I took my Waverly chalk paint in the color Ballet Slipper Pink and started doing some distressing. I'm using my little stencil brush that I get from Dollar Tree. I like using it on pieces like this because it's stiff, but it also gets down in between those slats. And I just dip it into the lid of that chalk paint, wipe it off on my wet wipe, and then just lightly go over all the areas that I want to have some distressing. I know pink isn't a typical distressing color, but I love using it on these pieces in my office. Now I'm going to take some of those little pink roses that I got from Goodwill and I'm clipping off 10 of them from their little wires. You can get these little roses, they're just little ribbon roses. You can get them at Joann's, I've even seen them at Walmart. They're not expensive, but I got a great deal on these. I found that whole big bag at Goodwill for 89 cents and I could not pass them up. Um, once I got these clipped off, I figured out my spacing on them and then I'm just using a little bit of hot glue to attach them right along that center rung to the front of my crate. I knew that I was going to be putting foam sheets in this and they would not stay in with those big openings at the bottom of this crate. So I just grabbed a piece of cardboard. This is an old box that I had on hand and I measured out how big I needed the piece of cardboard to be and drew it out and then just use my Zacto knife and cut it out. We're going to pop it right into the bottom and put our sheets in. And there's my little crate. I love how this piece turned out. It's so simple and it was so cheap, but it is such a pretty piece to have on my storage shelves. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use an old clipboard, an old Scrabble game I got from Goodwill, some lace from my stash, some small pink roses I got from Goodwill, assorted paint, and some tools from my work caddy. The first thing I did was give my clipboard a good coat of paint. I'm just using the chalkboard paint that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. It's probably the same thing as the Waverly chalk paint, but this is actually going to be a chalkboard. And since that had the word chalkboard in the description, I figured why not use it, especially since I already had it on hand. I gave my clipboard a good coat of paint on the front, the back, and the sides. It only took one coat and I also painted my hardware. I did this though because it was looking a little rough. You could totally leave this silver. And if you don't have an old clipboard, they actually sell this same kind at the Dollar Tree. Now I want to make some shabby flowers. So I took my flat lace and I cut off a strip. Then I wrap that around my hand about five or six times and slip it off. I took a piece of twine and wrapped it around the center and tied it off as tight as I could tie it. Now you could also use the little clear hair bands for this, but I have just moved my craft room and I couldn't find mine, so twine worked fine. Now I take my scissors and I cut open those ends and then I just kind of pull at it and twist it around until I firm, full, until I form it into a circle. Now I'm going to take my scissors and I just start clipping at it. You clip it open. It doesn't matter how the shabbier the better. And then I just trim it around and make it into a circle. 
Now I'm going to use some of these little pink roses that I found at Goodwill and I clip off three of the little roses from the wires and I'm going to use hot glue and attach them right to the center of my little flower. I got these from Goodwill and I got a great deal on them but they also sell these little flowers at Joann's and at Walmart. Now we're going to do it one more time. We cut a strip of lace, wrap it around our hand about five or six times, slip it off, tie off that center with a piece of twine, cut open the ends, spread it out, twist it around, use the scissors and cut little slits into it, then use three of our little pink roses and glue them right into the middle. Now that my chalkboard is dry, I wanted to soften it up a little bit. So I took some of my pink acrylic paint and I mixed it with a little bit of that plaster chalkboard paint. And I took my stencil brush that I got from the Dollar Tree. It's really stiff and I like it. And I just kind of dabbed around the edges. I did not want this to be a solid paint line. I wanted it to be soft and wispy and look kind of romantic and old. Now I'm going to take one of the tile holders from my Scrabble game and the letters that spell out notes. For the tile holder, I'm going to use some more of that plaster chalk paint and that pink acrylic paint mixed together. And I'm going to paint my tile holder and that's going to be a chalk holder. Then I take my little letters and I just kind of dab around those edges. I just kind of want to soften them up. And I know it doesn't show up real well on camera, but in person this makes it so pretty and feminine just having that little touch of pink around those edges. Now we're going to put this together. I take my tile holder and put a little bit of hot glue on it and glue it right down close to the bottom. And then for my little letters, I figured out how I wanted to lay them on that clip and I just use a little bit of hot glue and attach them straight to my clip. I did purposely turn these at different angles so that it would look a little more whimsical. Now we're going to take our little shabby flowers and figure out how I want to arrange them and then use a little bit of hot glue and attach them to my board. And there's our chalkboard. I love how this piece turned out. It's so simple to make and it is so pretty in my craft room. I also like that I can make quick notes on there to remind me of things I need to do. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use an assortment of old jars that I had been saving for craft projects, but decided to use for small item storage in my new craft room, an old tin can that I saved from the garbage, some chalk paint, lace ribbon from the Dollar Tree, some tissue paper from my stash, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some tools from my work caddy. The first thing I wanted to do was paint this tin can. I'm using the Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster, and I figured the only part that's going to show of this is the bottom of it, but I'm going to be applying that tissue paper to this can and I wasn't really sure how much would show through that. So I decided to go ahead and paint the whole can. I would rather be safe than end up sorry in the long run. I also paint the lids of my jars. I want these to have a uniform look. So I painted all the little pieces with my Waverly chalk paint as well. Now I'm going to take those jars and use some paper tape and I'm just going to tape around and mark off a section at the top and the bottom of each one of these large jars for painting. I'm not going to paint the center of these jars because I want to be able to see what's inside of them. For the small jars, I just tape off the top because that's the only part that I'm going to be painting. Now I'm using that Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and I'm just going over the tops of the small jars and the top and bottom of the large jars. I did go ahead and paint all the way up to the top even where the rings were. I was afraid that when I put the lid on it would scratch them up but I wanted them to have a uniform look so I did go ahead and paint all of it and it turned out just fine.
Now that my can is dry, I'm going to apply my tissue paper to it. I have this really pretty rose printed tissue paper that a friend of mine gave me a few years back and I'm going to apply it to my can using some Mod Podge. I put down a really good coat of the Mod Podge and then I very lightly apply my tissue paper to it. Once you get it down, you just kind of press around with it and push out as many wrinkles and air bubbles as you can. And then I use my scissors and trim that up. And then I'm gonna put another coat of Mod Podge on top of this so that it protects that tissue. I also went ahead and Mod Podge my lids to my jars. I figured that this would protect that chalk paint and keep it from getting too scratched up. And I also put a layer of Mod Podge on the paint of the jars. Somehow I lost the footage to that, but I did it. <laughs> now I want to finish up the edges of my tin can and I have this really pretty lace ribbon that I had gotten from the Dollar Tree. So I just take and put a bead of glue along the top edge of that can and then I press that lace ribbon right into it. I cut it off and seal it at the end. Now be careful with this because that lace ribbon is open and you can burn your fingers. Once I done that, I went ahead and did the bottom edge of this too just to give it a completed finished look. Now comes the satisfying part. We get to take our tape off. And there's our set. I love how these pieces turned out. My jars are probably more farmhouse than shabby chic, but I love that I can see inside of them and I love how my set looks all together. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you like, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We would love for you to tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Wild Card Wednesdays, and then finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday morning. Bye, y'all!